Hi there, I'm Andy Owen, the International Technical Manager for ICL Turf and Landscape, and I just want to introduce the first of maybe three short technical update videos with a focus on anthracnose, Collatotrichum cereale. For this first one, I'm really pleased to be joined by Kate Entwistle from the Turf Disease Centre. Um, Kate, thank you so much for joining. Um, I'm glad you're here. I wanted to talk a little bit about the the biology of anthracnose, but maybe maybe before that, just to start, for those of of the people viewing who have not heard you speak or met you in person, could you give us a a little bit of your background and and what you do at the Turf Disease Centre? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, thank you very much for asking me to to be part of this this morning. Uh, so what I would um, say about my background, I I qualified in pathology, in agriculture, but then um, I suppose specialised in turf when I joined the SDRI back in 1990. I did 10 years at SDRI and then I set up the Turf Disease Centre in 2000. So I work for myself, I work independently and have done this now for 20 years working for myself. Uh, I think initially we set up the Turf Disease Centre just to offer turf managers a way of identifying fungal disease problems that develop on the turf. But we soon realised that it wasn't just fungal disease, but there were other organisms that contribute to, to disease. So I work closely now with Colin Fleming over in Northern Ireland, and he's taught me to identify plant parasitic nematodes. And together we're kind of interested in this interaction between the stress caused by the nematodes and the fungal disease development. So most of the work really is diagnostics work and helping the turf managers to identify diseases. But I also work collaboratively with research organizations around the world, looking at specific research projects. Um, and uh, for the last few years, I've had a license to receive turf samples from outside of Europe. So we get some quite interesting warm season problems coming through too. I bet, I bet. No, thank you for that. That's really interesting. Um, so we want to focus in on anthracnose. Uh, how how important a disease do you see that for for cool season turf grass? And what can you tell us about the the biology of the pathogen? Anthracnose diseases seem to be increasing, actually, particularly on close mown turf. Uh, and I think part of that part of its climate. So the, the, the turf is under more stress due to the climate conditions. But also, I think. The turf manager expects more from his turf, he's pushing it much harder and in doing so putting the turf under stress and really anthracnose is a stress related disease. So we're seeing more and more disease coming through um, but this fungal pathogen Caletotrichum cereale as it's called now, um, it's a fungus that can easily produce a large number of spores on the leaf. And the spores are the primary way in which the fungus goes into the plant. So it'll, it follows its life cycle by the spores landing on the leaf, the spores germinate, and the mycelium from that spore germination goes inside the leaf, starts an infection in the plant, and eventually once it's taken all the nutrition that it needs from the plant, it needs to move on so it produces more spores, and this is how the cycle is completed. It will happily live saprophytically as well, um, but it is quite a capable, active parasite. That's really interesting. Thank you. It's a yeah. When I think about anthracnose, you always read that there are two distinct phases of the disease. There is talk of a foliar blight and also talk of a basal rot. And I must admit, generally, when when I'm out looking at turf grass, <laughs> I generally see quite a lot of um, the basal rot under the right conditions but I don't really come across foliar blight too much. Can you can you say something about the two distinct forms and how you identify them, perhaps how they occur, when they occur? Mm -hmm. Well as for a lot of the fungal diseases that we have, anthracnose is similar in that it can occur at any time of the year. So either phase of the disease can occur at any time of the year depending on the local environmental conditions. But in general, the foliar blight disease will develop under warm, wet conditions and the basal rot disease will develop under cool, wet conditions. So historically, we've said the basal rot is a winter disease problem and the foliar blight a summer disease. 
but that's kind of just a, a broad outline. You can get them anywhere. So, um, yeah, go I was on. going to say identification of the, the two. What do you look out for? Yeah. So we'll start with the basal rot because it's the easiest one. Uh, the basal rot, the fungus will grow in the crown of the plant. And as it develops through the crown of the plant, it basically severs the leaf tissue from the root tissue. And so the initial symptom that you'll see is a yellowing of the leaf because it's starved of nutrition. So initially just a yellowing. And then as it becomes more and more starved, it will go red or orange and eventually the plant will die. And what you can do is you can pull out the plants from the turf and you'll see a very dark dark brown black discoloration through the crown and and that is almost certainly going to be the anthracnose basal rot but the same fungus can develop actually on the leaf as i said during warm wet conditions and we tend to see their symptoms that resemble more of a drought stressed turf so the turf might look a little bit off color slightly grayish maybe um, and usually the areas are quite diffuse so you don't have distinct patches or areas. It's just a general look to the turf. It doesn't look quite right. But when you look closely at the plant, what you'll see are little hair-like structures on the leaf. They're dark brown hair-like structures. And these are the spore-producing structures of the fungus. Uh, and you can clearly see those with a times 10 hand lens. And this is the foliar blight phase. And these little structures will release countless numbers of spores onto the wet leaf surface and then if there is moisture available on the leaf they will germinate and infect the plant and the cycle will carry on. Oh, that's clear, that's clear. Are there differences between susceptibility between species of turf grass? That's a really interesting question. Um, all cool season grasses and actually I would think most warm season can become infected with Kalita trichum. But there's a lot of research to show now that if you have a mixed sward, for argument's sake, poa annua and agrostis, then if the poa is affected, the agrostis won't be. Or conversely, if the agrostis is, the poa is unlikely to be. You can have a case where they're both affected, but one is usually more severely affected than the other. So they're slightly different types of the fungus. But yeah, the most, the most common uh, grass that is affected will be polar annua and I think mainly because that one reacts so quickly to changes in the environmental conditions. Yeah that's that's interesting actually that leads into the nice way into the next question which is which is about the specific environmental conditions in which you, you see anthracnose so so could you list out under what conditions you would you would come across it most often? So with the basal rot I would say most often it will be cool wet conditions during the winter time so turf areas where you may have a problem with surface drainage are likely to get it so you've got water accumulating around the base of the turf that will not only help the fungus to grow but it slows down the growth of the plant because you've got less oxygen available to the roots so if you have an issue with anaerobic or uh, root zones or a problem with surface drainage you are more likely to get basal anthracnose um, low levels of nutrition uh, so the plants under stress due to low nutrition areas of compaction and so that conversely the root zone might be very dry so it's again it's just a stress it doesn't have to be too wet a stress it can be too dry a stress as well and, and that can be an issue and uh, one place where we do see anthracnose uh, in dry conditions is above fairy rings okay. so if a fairy ring is causing water repellents uh, any applied irrigation or rainfall will actually sit at the base of the turf and not actually penetrate the root zone. And so you've created this wet base of the turf, which is ideal for the development of the disease. So um, yeah, we can often see anthracnose developing quite severely on compacted or dry root zones because of that water repellent. That's really clear. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, so... I do seem to remember if you want to try and treat anthracnose successfully using a fungicide, it always says that you are better off applying the fungicide preventatively. But it often also says, you know, that preventative application should be made two to four weeks 
prior to seeing symptoms in the sward. Can you just explain that? That must be really difficult to get right. Are there any tips you've got? It, it is very difficult. The, the reason that um, it's advisable to apply the fungicide and to make sure the fungicide is around the plant, so it's had time to move around the plant prior to infection, is simply that once the fungus is inside the plant, it's, it's infected the tissues and therefore those tissues are going to die. So what we need to do is arm the plant with the, the fungicide prior to that infection and so prevent that initial uh, fungal uh, accumulation in the in the plant tissues but timing is very very difficult because you can't see the fungus but what you do have is historic information on your course about where that disease developed previously so you can keep an eye out for the initial signs of the, of the disease or know from historic records when it came in and look at those um, the the, uh, the weather forecasts to see whether the environmental conditions are going to to become conducive for disease development or fungal activity so keep an eye on the weather know from history what areas are first affected on your course and and really just scout for the disease um, you can use a times 10 hand lens to find these little spore producing structures on the leaf and so the spores from that can then go down to cause the basal rot anthracnose so if you keep an eye on the leaf and see those then you can at least arm the plant and it won't get the crown rot in the cool wet conditions brilliant thank you that's really good um uncovered everything really nicely i think so th thanks so much for joining us, Kate. Um, for those of you that are watching, look out for the for the other two in the series of these short technical updates on anthracnose. Um, hope you've enjoyed this one. Hope you found it useful and um, hope to catch up with you again soon. Thanks very much. Bye bye.